Hey, Weather Warriors, a powerful storm system could be affecting the south and east half of the United States here midweek, Wednesday through about Friday. I'm going to talk about what this storm could produce. It could produce a barrage of hazards, not only winter precipitation, but also severe weather. Before we begin, click the subscribe button below if you like detailed forecast breakdowns, more depth than you would see on TV. We also have a giant community of weather enthusiasts just like you. So let's just get right into it here. This is our jet stream. This is what we're going to do first here. Then we'll track this thing hour by hour. Now, you can see this powerful jet stream starting to zoom its way into the southeastern United States. This is Wednesday at 1 p.m. Now, this is when I think the show's really going to get started. There's going to be severe weather and winter weather happening at the same time for some people that haven't seen it all season. So, very powerful jet. This is going to aid severe weather development. We're talking 50, 60, 70, 80 knots, much more than you would actually really need for severe weather. So, we'll look at the severe weather first, then we'll look at the winter weather uh, potential in a second here. But as you see here, this is a Wednesday at 1 p.m. This is the NAM computer model. And we got a cold front kind of extending out into the southeastern United States. These are the dew points. Now, 60 degree dew points are gonna be that kind of that bluish green shade. So this right here, anywhere really along and south of that, there's pretty good moisture for this time of year. It's uh, February, so that's pretty good, plentiful, juicy moisture for at least some rain. And we'll look at the thunderstorm potential here in a second. But we got our cold front here. We got our moisture out ahead of it. Probably a nice warm front right there. Your best bet for severe weather it's going to be immediately along and ahead of the cold front and kind of along the warm front, you know, about 40 miles in each direction. And so that's where our best setup's going to occur. So some, probably somewhere in this area on Wednesday from Louisiana into <clears throat> Mississippi, <clears throat> Alabama, all the way out to Georgia, potentially even South Carolina. I think it'll stay mostly west with this area being the best. What we're going to look at now is the instability. This is measuring the ju the power in the atmosphere for severe storms. And as you can see here, this is a mixed layer cape. There isn't a whole heck of a lot of instability. So I know there's some people that are really hyping this one up. And I actually kind of disagree with the SPC on this one. They have enhanced risk out. I just, the lack of instability is a little bit concerning. We're not even touching. Uh, 500 in some of these areas and you really need about 750 to a thousand for severe storms that includes large hail damaging winds and tornadoes however because we have such good wind shear over top of this if you look at the jet stream this is going northwest at about 80 miles an hour up top the low level jet just below that as we go towards uh, 7 p.m here <clears throat> it's at 50 to 60 miles an hour so you got winds that are blasting above you out of the north or out excuse me out of the southeast at 50 to 60 miles an hour and then even farther up even faster than that then you go back to the surface and look what happens here this is uh, very incredible the winds are actually out of the south at the surface and they're only about 10 knots so there is a huge difference in wind and what that's going to do is shake up the atmosphere that's going to be blowing the the up the all the precipitation away from the updrafts of the storm systems and therefore the updrafts will keep on building that could offset the uh, lack of instability we have and still give us at least a slight chance for some severe storms with all hazards possible particularly wind but even some hail <clears throat> the wind shear is a little bit unidirectional for tornadoes you want to see a little bit more spin so like southeast winds to westerly winds uh, but nonetheless, uh, I, I do think an isolated tornado threat could occur somewhere in like near Mississippi on Wednesday afternoon. But I think the main threat will be isolated damaging winds and some isolated instances of hail. Now, let's look at that significant tornado parameter. This is measuring the tornado potential. You can see it's at about a 1 right here in south central Mississippi. If you go back at 1 p.m., it's a little bit more widespread across, across Alabama and Mississippi. They go towards 10 p.m., it, it moves into uh, Alabama, but usually uh, later in the evening, the tornado threat goes uh, a lot lower because the cap is back in the atmosphere. It kind of regrows. Essentially, means mid-level warming, which kind of prevents surface-based updrafts from occurring. The clouds getting all the way to the surface. It'll be above that warm layer. And then also, you, you just don't get as much uh, instability at that time of night and you get more uh, squall lines so tornado threat probably not as high there now let's look at that winter storm threat everyone is talking about now we're going to look 
nationally here and we're going to turn on the composite reflectivity we're going to put on a loop here and this is uh pretty interesting because things have been trending up so here's wednesday now this is going to be wednesday around lunchtime around 1 p.m got to 1 p.m. here here it is here's a low pressure system here and you can see that gradient these are the thickness lines essentially a temperature gradient the thing you want to keep your eye on is this 540 line that's generally speaking that's about the average temperature in the atmosphere being about freezing so near and along and north of that line is where your snow threats going to be you can see the NAM has snow south of that line but I want to <clears throat> look at something real quick and this you know, that includes Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and Kansas. But what we can do is we can actually look at temperatures. So let's uh, freeze that frame, and then we're going to look at temperatures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this line we have, this 540 line. So you see that there's snow south of it. Well, is it freezing at the surface? Let's look at that real quick. So we'll look at the temperatures and the wind barbs, and you can see it's actually kind of above freezing there. The blue is going to be uh, 32 degrees or so. So what I'm forecasting here early on is a lot of wet, sloppy snow. That's kind of how we can look at that. So it's going to be a slushy snow. doesn't really stick. So it's going to have some accumulation problems early on. But notice this high pressure up here. And this secondary low, this is something we're going to have to watch. If these two merge a little bit quicker, there could be a big time winter storm here in the Midwest and Northeastern United States. At the moment, this appears to be a little bit slow and the high pressure system up here a little bit behind this thing but there's still a lot of cold air this thing is still moving fast and it's close enough where i do think we'll have snow a lot farther south than what we've been seeing this winter at least for the ohio valley region so as we head towards the rest of wednesday here into thursday this will move to the northwest or northeast here this is uh wednesday thursday around wednesday at around 7 p.m thursday at uh, in the morning around between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. you can see this low pressure system there's your line of severe storms from Mississippi uh, all the way out to Alabama into Tennessee typically north of the low pressure you're not going to get severe storms there's not that moisture pull up there and uh, typically north of the warm front it's going to be more rain and snow but you can see that 540 line hanging out around here so places north of that 540 line that snow is going to be a lot more powdery blowing around a little bit more not a whole lot of wind except maybe up here in Minnesota and the Dakotas. But south of that line, going to be wet snow. So Pennsylvania, New York, wet, sloppy snow, Ohio, and even Indiana. As we head towards Thursday night, this uh, warm frontal system moves into the northeast and delivers lots of wet snow, a warm frontal type snow. So what will happen is you'll get a brief period of this, fast moving, and it's typically a brief period. And then what will happen is you'll get uh, mixed precipitation move in uh, on the warm frontal side. So you can see that mixed precipitation now moving into parts of New York while in Maine. You know, and the other thing you're going to have to watch is the second low behind this. You, you can actually see this thing right here. This is something we're going to have to watch. If these two can phase, and I'm looking at this right now, and they're pretty close, if they kind of phase together, you could have a pretty powerful storm. But doesn't look to be the case right now, but still another secondary low behind this main low that comes through this big storm system. This low is going to have a ton of cold air to work with because this system has actually pulled some cold air down and this high pressure system a lot closer now. The second low here is going to deliver more winds, more dry air or more dry snow, you know, powdery type snow and plenty of cold air. There's going to be a nice Arctic blast that comes into the north central and northeastern United States as we head towards Thursday afternoon. It's around 1 p.m. So Great Lakes getting slammed with a bunch of dry, uh, powdery snow. As you head towards uh, Thursday night into Friday, the second low kind of moves through. So really just a constant, you know, maybe two or three day event of snowfall for the northeastern and Ohio Valley Midwest Great Lakes region. Again, there's going to be off and on. You, you get multiple waves with this thing. That first wave will bring snow along the warm front. Then it might switch to ice a little bit, then snow behind it. And this second uh, low pressure system is going to kind of weaken as it moves to the east and slow down. So it's going to be just kind of lingering snow showers behind it uh, as well. So you can see that moves in. Maybe if it's some, 
have to look, but you know, there there might be some little uh, intense little tiny snow showers, maybe some snow squalls or convective type events. We'll have to watch that, but you can definitely see northeastern United States still on Friday getting some snow. Meanwhile, the 510 lines all the way into the north central United States into the Great Lakes region. So very cold air behind this thing, especially near into the east of this high. Temperatures very, very cold. Let's look at the temperatures real quick behind this thing, and then we'll look at snowfall amounts. And uh, let's go out to about 84 hours. Wait for this to load. And this is uh, pretty sharp cold, some of the coldest air we've seen in a while here. This is going to be uh, Friday morning, and you can see temperatures here. Like I said, you know, Arctic outbreaks, especially for the northwest, north central United States, but this one even might affect parts of the eastern United States uh, this week. And you can see the purple line here is the zero degree line extending all the way down to Maine potentially and obviously the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Iowa and even some sub-zero temperatures within that region up there. Meanwhile, Canada getting blasted with very, very cold weather, 20, 30, 40 degrees below zero, especially for the eastern half. So very cold behind this. Finally, some uh, snow for the central parts of the potentially Ohio Valley. So we're going to look at snowfall amounts. This is the NAM computer model. The GFS is a lot different. I'll show you what's going to happen here in a second. You can see the NAM's actually forecasting good six to eight inches here from about Maine through New York, through Northwest Ohio, Indiana, into Illinois, and down to Missouri. Generally speaking, this region right here into Oklahoma, even Texas, and then all the way north into Chicago, Michigan, and then all the way into central and northern parts of Maine. That area generally speaking, speaking about four to eight inches in there so your core of your heaviest snow and this has kind of looked like this for a while is going to be in illinois indiana and parts of northern missouri i think the more likely area is going to be in illinois and indiana and maybe even michigan with that second low delivering a little bit colder air i think the models might have a little bit of uh, issues with the warmer air here in missouri i think it's gonna be a little bit warmer early on but it will make a big difference if you're one or two degrees. So I think they might be overestimating just a bit out there, maybe more like two to six inches out there. But heaviest snow going to be in Indiana and Illinois, where some areas could re receive six to eight inches or so. And then also the northeastern United States, some four to eight inch amounts there. And then obviously maybe a couple inches Friday with that uh, second system. Now, the you, know, you look at the GFS here, and, and it's pretty impressive. You know, we'll go all the way out here and you can see that it's got more widespread and it's actually a little bit farther south with that snow. You know, this line right here from central Maine into really the Great Lakes, southern Michigan and then northern Missouri, about six to ten inches. Some areas, maybe even ten inches, particularly Ohio and uh, parts of Indiana. I do think Ohio, northwestern parts of Ohio will receive uh, some pretty good amounts. I think the GFS is a little bit more accurate with that. However, I do think that this thing it will trend a little bit north. The past several runs of the GFS have moved a little bit off to the north by 50 or 100 miles. So I think that trend will continue. The NAM's starting to move a little bit farther south. So I think you're starting to see some agreement generally within this line right here from near about Chicago down into about central Illinois where that main core is going to set up. You can also see the GFS is much less on the western side, which I do agree with. So that's generally the snow forecast. We'll definitely make some more updates as we get closer to this event. But like I said, you know, this is going to be a mixed type of storm with the best severe threat going to be in Mississippi and Indiana once again. Maybe even Georgia and the southern parts of Tennessee with mostly a wind threat. A couple isolated hail instances, one or two tornadoes possible. We'll have to watch that. If there's any increase in instability, we're talking 500 Cape. Right now, if it increases to maybe a 1,000, that could really spell chaos in this area. That doesn't appear to be the case right now. If anything, I would expect it to go down. That's kind of been the trend with the models this year and even last year. Then obviously, the snowstorm to the north has been trending up and generally also trending slightly to the north. So like I said, Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, New York, maybe even as far east as Maine, under the gun for that one. So share this with a friend. Check out my 10-year radar time lapse up there if you haven't checked it out. Subscribe if you like these detailed weather forecast breakdowns. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you soon.